Hello, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation with a short video about a, uh, an unusual way that you can do each art practice uh, using Google Earth. And uh, we set this up because, in part, because we have a, a book, this workbook of uh, chart problems uh, using this training chart 18465TR. And so we want to be able to work those problems uh, without relying on a paper chart, although the paper chart's readily available. So let us start out and why, where, where you get that book. This is a StarPath webpage, starpath.com, and under the books catalog you'll see this book here. And that's the book, but I want to, here's the support link, that's where we want to go. And there's several, there's several ways we support uh, uh, people training with this book. But now I'm going to this link right here, a quick easy way to use Google Earth to do e-chart navigation practice. And so you just click that link right there. Now you can actually, if you have Google Earth, you can actually open this and it'll just open and start. But I think it's the best way because this is a larger file. It's probably better just to save it. So you say OK and then you save it. And so here's the saving progress. Oh, I had a couple others of these, but look here, it's 21.922. It's load downloading. This is about a 50, 49 megabyte file, so it takes a while to download it. But once you have this downloaded, and it looks like I've done it a couple times, but here's one already done, then you can just go to uh, Google Earth. Go to Google Earth. Whoops, that's not Google Earth. Uh, quit. There's Google Earth. And then uh, look at your directory of downloads. And then just take this file and bring it over, bring it over and drop it. Just drop it right there. And that, uh-oh, now I'm, now I'm going to load it a second time. I didn't want to do that. Uh, but you see it put it in the temporary places here. And when you're done, uh, oh, it's already there. Hmm, that's pretty fast. Uh, oh no, it's not there. It's just, oh no, it is there. That's quick. Um, so there you are. When you're done, you want to save it, and that will move it up here. If you see on the left here, that'll store it permanently so you have it to go again. Now, just a couple notes here. Uh, first, this, this button up here on the right, north, that gets your chart straight up and down, which is what we want. And another one, go to Google Earth Preferences and Navigation, and then put a check mark here. Do not automatically tilt while zooming. Uh, Google Earth has a sort of a, a nice feat. Well, it's, a, it's not nice in this case, but when you're zooming, it tilts the chart so you get more of a 3D perspective. And we don't want that going on for now. So put a check mark that that doesn't happen. Then over here, just double check you have the units right for common for marine navigation, degrees and decimal minutes. That goes there. And then we're OK. Then we can zoom in, and you'll see that you have a chart here with very good resolution that you can do navigation with. And there are several tools, but the main tool I'll just demonstrate in this exercise is a, is a line tool. And then you can just say um, uh, measure like here. I'm going to do an example like that. And you see there's that, there's that uh, distance right here, 3.28 and 0.059 degrees. These would be true, true heading. And then you can change the units, but we want nautical miles. Okay, clear. So that's done. So now let's just work one example. Um, where were we? The book. Okay, and then we'll go to um, exercises uh, in the chart. And I marked one. I th okay, here's one. What is the true bearing and distance? So true bearing from Smith Island Light to the flashing green four-second light Dav on Davidson Rock. And what is the distance? So we want range and bearing between those two lights. Uh, okay, now if you don't know where those things are on, on any chart, or this chart or any chart, then just download the Coast Pilot. That's a free download, the Coast Pilot for this region. And then uh, the, these uh, prominent places or landmarks and so forth, they'll be in the index and they'll tell you where to find them. 
there's other there's other tricks for doing that. We'll cover that later. But now here is let's see, Partridge Bank. That's not what we want. Oh, okay. So here's Smith Island Light, and then this other rock is up here. There's Davidson Rock, right? Davidson Rock Light, right there. So we and I'm just uh, rolling the mouse. Uh, the mouse cursor to do this for now. Okay, so now I get the tool out here, this tool, line tool, move it a little bit. Then I can drop it right on the light, and I can, you can do this very precisely, you see. I can put it right there, bang, and then go up. And now I'm, I'm zooming, but you see, now I'm gonna have to reach down with my other hand and get the keys. I'm doing the arrow keys to go up here, move the chart up. Oh, okay, there's Davidson Rock, light. And again, look, you can get very high precision. So there, I drop it there, bang. And so we have uh, five, and well, there's some flexibility here. What do we have in flexibility? Not much, because we're so fine. Okay, so there's the answer, 5.86 nautical miles and a bearing of a 9.5. That would be oh, oh, rounded to oh one three oh one three true. So then I can go uh, go back to the book, uh, back to the book, and um, back to the book, and then look at the answers. Uh, um, answers exercises answers uh, resources answers here number two. And then two, uh, let's see, two, what was it, 227. Okay, so here it is. And then you can do things like, you can highlight that. So 5.84 and 013 true. So that's the answer to that. Let me just show one other trick that you might do here. If you need to, uh, where are we, on a browser? On a browser. Oh. No, I'm not on a browser. I'm on Google Earth. Okay, gotcha. Back on Google Earth and zoom in. If you want to put a, if you, you read the latitude and longitude down here on the bottom of the scale. So this is like 48, 24, 25, 50, 122. So let's just say I wanted to put a mark or a pinpoint, or if I want to read a latitude, I just zoom in on it real fine and get that, you know, put the cursor up there, and then I can read the latitude and longitude. Um, and then, but if I want to put a buoy at a particular spot, one thing to do is just uh, grab a pin and then go here. See, that's in the about the right spot. You can move that that way and drop it. Or you could just say, say you wanted exactly 24.00. You could just put uh, 24.00. And then let's say I wanted exactly 123. And then uh, oh, oh. Oh, uh, 23.00.000, uh, oh, 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 okay. So then I can, and then you could give it a name, uh, my name, whatever, and then check that that's okay, and then say okay. So then, oh, where did that guy go? Okay, so, oh, okay, obviously he's right on that line. And so that's another way you can work with this. And then one last tip. When you're done using the... Uh, oh, and then each of the problems that you work are actually saved over here on this left side. So if you want to, you can save uh, all of your lines and routes and one thing or another here. And then just uh, shut them off and show them the next time. The, the other one tip I would have is since this is a big file... I would, uh, first of all, you want to right click and then save, save to my places, and that'll just copy it up here. But then you want to shut it off, shut it off before you close Google Earth. That way, next time you open Google Earth, it'll be a little bit nicer. And I will stop there.